welcome back to uh, our WWE 2021 save here on TW 2020. This is episode three, and before we jump in, I would highly recommend, if you haven't watched the first two episodes, check those out. Uh, in episode one, we made some changes to our pay-per-view and TV schedule uh, for all of you. Um, clapping in unison, yes, we changed uh, Raw from three hours to two hours. That's just going to help me and my sanity for booking WWE Raw on a weekly basis. Uh, so we, we made that into... Uh, two hours once again, and we also brought back the brand-specific pay-per-views. So Raw and SmackDown will have their own pay-per-views in addition to the joint ones we do at the bigger shows each year. In episode two, we did the official WWE draft, and uh, we had our rosters for Raw and SmackDown. Uh, so check those episodes out before you jump into this one. That'll give you a better idea of kind of the direction we're heading in uh, with this. And uh, just as also a note, uh, a couple things. We are going to have to change some gimmicks, so we will have to make a few of those changes throughout the show. We'll talk about them when we get to them, but uh, several, you know, superstars on each brand uh, had poor gimmicks or awful gimmicks. We wanted to change those. Some had some adequate ratings. We wanted to try to boost those up a bit. So uh, we're going to have to make some gimmick changes. So that's, that'll just be something we do. Uh, you'll have quite a few of those uh, on some of these because uh, as the Stark, not some great gimmicks across the board. So we want to change some of those uh, to shape our storylines moving forward. And also, um, we just as a booking standpoint, like... I tend to do more old school type approach, so you're probably not going to see, you know, the main stars facing off every single week. Uh, I like to build to the big matches and all of that stuff. So um, we will probably lose some popularity early on because we have to sort of build up our storylines the way we want them. We have to build up our stars. Uh, and um, I think that, you know, that's something I'm willing to give up. We are WWE and we're not in danger of going out of business. So we're going to maybe take a little bit of a step back from a, a popularity standpoint to take a big step forward. Uh, that's what we're going to try to do. So that's just an idea on my booking style. But let's dive in. We're in week one, Raw, uh, June 2021. And uh, we start off here with uh, the pre-show. Angel Garza gets the win against Mansoor. Uh, Angel Garza, not his best performance, uh, which is not ideal. I think Angel Garza read the dirt sheets and heard that he was getting a big push. Um, so I don't like to see that right off the bat with him not being on his game. But uh, it's a pre-show match. Gets a 42. It is what it is. And uh, now we jump into the main show, which will start with a big announcement from our friend Vince McMahon. So Vinny Mac comes out, cuts a promo, um, gets an 80 here. We'll, we love that. We'll take that any day. Um, Vince announces that next week on Raw, um, he is going to announce the new raw general manager and uh, yes i know some people haven't necessarily loved the authority figures and all that over the years but uh, i promise it's going to be more like a general manager less like an authority figure uh, that we've seen uh, at times in wwe we want to go uh, and sort of bring back the the golden era of uh, raw general managers in terms of just how they were used um, so we're going to try to do that here they're not going to be in every single um, segment they're not going to be used you know 15 times on the show or anything like that we're going to try to use them in the spots where they make sense and we're going to treat this as sort of two completely distinct brands where you have general managers that you know could pull off trades could have some ideas for what they want to do they could come up with some uh, very fascinating stuff so uh, Vince next week announces the new raw general manager we start off king of the ring qualifiers here yes we brought back king of the ring in the first episode that is on our schedule. That's our first pay-per-view. And uh, a King of the Ring qualifier, Cesaro, advances uh, to King of the Ring with a win over Shelton Benjamin. Now, this says not much heat and terrible wrestling. I highly doubt <laughs> that these two had terrible wrestling. Uh, I love the built-in sort of stocked, um, you know, details on TW sometimes. But uh, I doubt that it was a terrible match. It's probably not as good as we want it to be at 62. But, uh, again, we're trying to build things up, and you have to sort of have a feeling out process for who's going to work well together, who's not, uh, and have good performances and such. So maybe went a little bit long here. We could have shortened this a little bit. But uh, anyway, uh, Cesaro is going to advance no matter what. He is going to King of the Ring where uh, he will, you know, basically be in the quarterfinals at King of the Ring. Uh, we are going to have the quarterfinals, semifinals, and the championship or the finals of King of the Ring all at the pay-per-view. So Cesaro advances on to King of the Ring in three weeks uh, as a winner over Shelton Benjamin. And now begins the gimmick changes we need to make. Quickly, Cesaro had wrestling machine. It was adequate. He's now going to be best in the world. Um, yes, I guess he's the new CM Punk. Um, so he is going to promote himself as the best wrestler in the world. Uh, he thinks he's the best, and let's see if that gimmick is going to help bump him up from adequate to great. That's what we wanted. Um, so, yes, we get a nice, great uh, rating here off the bat, so we'll take that. 
Benjamin also want to change his from cocky. He's going to be competitive, basically the veteran, wanting to prove that he's still got something, um, even though he didn't win this match. That is Shelton Benjamin's goal, and that was also adequate. Let's see if we can do better here. Very good. We'll take that. That's a bump up as well. So nice new gimmicks for Cesaro and Shelton Benjamin, but it's Cesaro advancing to King of the Ring. Big E, our man Big E, 71. Uh, just a great, uh, I love Big E. Um, here's a, it's a freestyle segment. Big E highlights, uh, is he the future of WWE? That's what we want to find out, and um, that is where the video was just highlights of Big E destroying people over the years. Uh, you know, just the strength, the just unbelievable uh, Big E and uh, what he could accomplish in WWE. So a nice hype video here for Big E, who will be in action uh, next week. And we have a promo from Kevin Owens. Uh, we start a storyline here, Kevin Owens' quest for the gold. So the reasoning behind this gets a 67. That's okay. Um, he's cutting a promo because Kevin Owens had the opportunity to be in King of the Ring. He was going to have a qualifier match, but he decided he would rather go for the sure thing with the championship gold, and that is a, a matchup against Sheamus here in a couple weeks on Raw for the United States title. And this is Kevin Owens explaining what the U.S. title would mean to him and that he wants to bring it back to its glory uh, and get it away from the hands of Sheamus. So he took that opportunity over being in the King of the Ring. He wanted championship belts and that's what he's here for. So nice promo from Kevin Owens um, to uh, move towards that match here in a couple weeks. Kevin Owens, Sheamus for the U.S. title. And then Kevin Owens with a little bit of a, a warm-up match, if you will. Went up against Drew Gulag, gets a 61. Um, pin up, pop up power bomb, gets the win. Gulak, not a great performance here, but as we'll see, um, one of the reasons why Gulak has a terrible gimmick or poor gimmick right now with no gimmick needed. Actually, he does need a gimmick, and we're going to try to give him that with Impact Player, uh, someone who is trying to plot their way to the top of WWE, and he's got a plan to do so. So let's see if that, hopefully that's better than poor, uh, I would hope at this point here. And oh yes, to go from poor to great, so maybe our friend Drew Gulak gains a little momentum uh, out of this, even though he loses his match against Kevin Owens. And then we get a promo from Dolph Ziggler. He is also going to be in King of the Ring qualifier action uh, next week, as he will take on Ricochet, and uh, Dolph, we're not giving him the scripted. Uh, if we're giving him off script, Dolph can do whatever the hell he wants to do. Dolph gets a 65 here on the promo. Uh, heaps hypes up his match uh, for next week against Ricochet, which he only mentions Ricochet, I think, for approximately 2.2 seconds in the promo. He doesn't care about Ricochet. He's going to win the whole thing, and it doesn't matter who you put in front of him. So that's, that's Dolph Ziggler. Um, that's what he's doing, and that is also going to go with his gimmick change. Uh, he was adequate as a show stealer. Well, he's an arrogant heel now. Hopefully, that's going to give him a nice bump up here. It does. We get a great rating on that. Also, uh, very nice to have Dolph Ziggler uh, with a good, great gimmick, even at this point. So Ziggler's ready for next week against Ricochet. Music video for Rhea Ripley, our Raw Women's Champion. Um, not a great rating here. Probably, I, I may, have, I probably could have picked a different angle. They would have got a higher rating, but uh, when you're booking WWE and you got a lot to book and you got a lot of details... Um, this was one that I probably just forgot to book uh, maybe a better uh, choice here for the angles. But, but Rhea Ripley's our women's champion. We would have liked this to be higher, uh, but uh, we certainly got plans for her as our women's champ. And uh, this was just a nice video promoting uh, our women's champion on Raw. And <laughs> this is not good. Um, Bailey defeats Liv Morgan. Uh, much heat, embarrassing wrestling, uh, not ideal. A 42. We are certainly very disappointed. With this particular outcome, um, I wanted better because I had some plans for these two together. Not necessarily a lot, but uh, we did have some things in mind we wanted to do with these two. But as we can see here, um, they have no chemistry. So we certainly want to try to get away from that if we can. I don't think it's going to take a lot of work uh, from a booking standpoint to do that. I just probably have to switch around a couple things. But I, we obviously don't want to go back to this, this singles match just yet with these two uh, because they don't have any chemistry and uh, it just did not come off very well. So uh, that's a little disappointing, to say the least, as two people who have to be the cornerstone of our Raw Women's division because we do have a brand split, and, um, you know, you can only feature, you know, so many, and you only have so many on each side. So uh, we will have to work around this non-chemistry with these two, but certainly disappointing here. We did not want that, uh, but we do have a gimmick change to do with uh, Liv Morgan. Um, she had Punk, which was adequate. We want to get her to Rebel. Let's see if that does any better. It does, so great. So maybe... You know, maybe that helps Liv Morgan in the uh, long run in terms of just her overness and such, but uh, probably not going to be having too many matches with, with Bailey and Liv Morgan uh, based on uh, them not having any chemistry. So, And next up, we do uh, a backstage promo here with the Street Profits. Gets a 57. 
Uh, Montez Ford does a good job with his improvisation. Improvisation. Uh, Angelo Dawkins did not, so that's another one of those things where, as we know, in TW, it's all about the details, and uh, I probably just could have clicked for Angelo Dawkins to have a script, Montez not. Uh, but they now start the storyline with the undisputed WWE Tag Team Champions. Again, go back to episode one. We took away the Raw and SmackDown Tag Team titles. We're only doing one uh, Tag Team Champions who will go from each brand. And the Street Profits will be in action. One of our non-King of the Ring matches at King of the Ring. It's a three-way match for the undisputed WWE Tag Team titles. The Street Profits versus the Usos versus New Day. Um, that will take place at King of the Ring. So uh, the Street Profits getting ready for that. And they will also be in action uh, next week to get themselves ready for uh, that match here in a couple weeks at King of the Ring. Next up, AJ Styles. He is in King of the Ring qualifier action next week. In our main event, he will take on Rey Mysterio. Uh, they will, yeah, they'll be our featured match next week on Raw. Gets a 65. Uh, AJ always cuts a nice promo. If you've heard him cut a promo before, this was probably the usual from AJ Styles. Running down Rey Mysterio and uh, basically talking about he how he is going to be the King of the Ring. So that's our main event next week. AJ Styles versus Rey Mysterio. And King of the Ring qualifier action here. Daniel Bryan joins Cesaro at King of the Ring. He gets the win uh, against John Morrison and uh, gets a 63. We, we certainly would have loved that to be much higher, uh, but that's okay. Maybe went a little long here. We could have tightened it up a little bit, probably added in some other notes that would have helped. Uh, but uh, still, we'll take it. Daniel Bryan um, gets the, the victory, and yeah, he's headed to King of the Ring. And um, it'll be interesting to see kind of what happens next for John Morrison because The Miz out injured. And uh, meanwhile, Daniel Bryan is going to put himself in the or put himself in the King of the Ring quarterfinals. Uh, and so, yes, King of the Ring, Daniel Bryan, Cesaro, two of our Raw representatives thus far. We'll find out next week whether Dolph Ziggler, Ricochet, AJ Styles, or Rey Mysterio, which two of those uh, will join them in the quarterfinals. And then Rey Mysterio responds to AJ Styles, running them down, and uh, Rey gets a 68 here, a nice little promo. Um, Rey is also ready for next week's match in the King of the Ring qualifiers. And then uh, Bobby Lashley. Oh, come on, Lashley struggling going off strip, off script. Uh, we get a 67 uh, for this one, and this was MVP and Bobby Lashley basically saying Bobby Lashley is bored. Like, this guy just needs something to do. Uh, he doesn't want to play on his phone. He doesn't want to read a book. He wants action, and uh, he is going to have a warm-up match next week. Uh, he's, he's declaring it as a warm-up match. He's not defending his title, but he says any match that he's not going to be in it's not for the championship. He only considers as a warm-up match. So uh, the true heel, Bobby Lashley, uh, wants to be in action next week, and he will be. Uh, we don't know who his opponent's going to be yet, but we do know he's going to be in action in non-title match next week because Bobby Lashley is bored. There's a T-shirt, ProWrestlingTees.com. I'm just kidding. Um, Bobby Lashley's bored, though. And that leads us to our main event, which is Edge capturing a victory against Robert Roode. Gets a 69. Nice main event there between these two. Edge hits the spear to get the victory. Um, Edge, though, off his game in this one. That's that's not ideal. Uh, but still, he gets the benefit of being Flair of the Month. So with Edge off his game, we probably could have got, you know, certainly a nicer a nicer rating here. Um, but um, that's okay. Still, we'll, we'll take it. We have plans for Edge, and um, Edge gets the victory in our main event. Uh, this is not King of the Ring action. This is just uh, our main event, Edge versus Robert Roode. And the reason why is because we have something planned with Edge. So... The storyline begins. What is Randy Orton up to? So it's basically Randy Orton after the match. He just starts circling the ring in his usual methodical style. Edge doesn't know if Randy Orton's going to hit the ring to attack him. No idea. But basically Randy Orton just walks down in his usual slow uh, snail pace and goes around the ring all the way around and then just heads to the back. And Edge is sort of left uh, wondering what Randy Orton is up to. So that is the, the title of our storyline uh, that we're going to have. Moving forward, uh, that's going to involve these two. It's what is Randy Orton up to? Perhaps we'll find out next week, but we do get a nice little uh, cliffhanger, and we get a nice rating uh, here to wrap up the show. Uh, one of our best ratings on this one, as we said. We certainly want much higher ratings uh, for a lot of our segments and stuff, but this is kind of where we're at right now. We're trying to build some things up, and we have to do that from the start. So uh, Edge uh, is wondering, what is Randy Orton up to? Uh, we'll hopefully find out next week on Raw, but uh, there's a little uh, suspense for you heading into next week to see what uh, the Viper has on his mind. So that will finish up the show. I don't expect it to get a high rating. We'll probably have some some red marks at the bottom, 
I have no doubt we're going to lose popularity. We probably don't have enough storylines. Um, we probably did a lot of things wrong, but again, we're okay with that for right now. So we get an overall rating of 63. Um, we lose popularity basically everywhere. <laughs> um, the feeling is we don't have enough storylines yet. Not surprised by that because we are starting storylines from scratch. And, and really, I think we probably only maybe advanced two or three here. And um, yeah, so so I think, again, not completely surprised, disappointed, um, whatever words you want to use. Um, so I think, yeah, that's that's kind of where we are on that. But um, there, there, there's what you get with the first episode of Raw. Uh, like I said, was it the best Raw ever? Absolutely not. But uh, we have to set up some stuff, and this is the way to do it. Uh, in my opinion, we have to sort of take a step back, to take a step forward, and that's what we're going to try to do here. So that was Raw uh, on our first uh, edition of this uh, 2021 save here in terms of the in-ring action. So Raw gets a 63. That was Raw. Um, let's look at uh, what we have going on here. Uh, if we look quickly look at the Raw report, we'll run through some of this. Uh, viewers, okay. Uh, a few extremists who have rated it. That's always the case with Raw, but as we said, not our best show. Uh, but we will uh, certainly improve that moving forward. Uh, we've got some goals from Vince McMahon. Let's uh, let's check that out before we get into the rest of this, which uh, could be good, could be bad. Looks like a couple bad ones there. Not shocked at that. But um, let's look at our goals from Vinnie Mac. All right. So not surprised Vince wants us to keep money. I don't think we're going to fall into debt. Um, that is not going to be an issue. We want Triple H to stay above popularity. Vince looking out for um, his his son. Uh, we also cannot hire anyone who works for a company of medium size or above. So that is somewhat significant. That's two years, three months, three weeks. So uh, that's high importance for Vince. So if we want to hire anyone away from AEW, New Japan and such, uh, could be a challenge because it will not make our friend Vince McMahon very happy. He also wants Becky Lynch to stay above uh, popularity at 71. Don't think that's going to be a, a big problem. And Vince doesn't want Daredevil, Psychopaths, or Technician Strikers, which, again, not surprised by any of this because that is not really Vince McMahon's style. So um, these are these are manageable. This is the only one I think we look at, and, and I've seen this in other saves, and I can't say it's very surprising, but um, this is one that, you know, we, we can't be still on way talent, basically. Vince doesn't want uh, any other talent coming from medium size or above. We do have NXT to work with, so we'll see if we can work around uh, any of that. Uh, so those are the goals from Vince, drug fees, raw viewing figures. Look at that. We get a stone cold rating. 316 is our rating for raw. If you look at that with what the actual ratings are with raw, I guess we will take that uh, based on uh, that number. So clearly though, uh, AB1, Fox Sports, not very happy in terms of the quality. Uh, our show rating was not great, so we are not surprised by that either. Uh, so really not a whole lot uh, in the way of mail. Anything else of note before we wrap up this episode? AW Dark Elevation, uh, a decent rating. Sean Spears, the star of the show there. Anything else uh, in terms of what stands out in the news? Um, I don't really see a whole lot. So um, that's what we have to work with. That was Raw. And uh, everything else, you know, we're kind of going to be uh, waiting here. We're kind of in this point where we're, we get in this SmackDown, we're starting up our storylines, and we're building to King of the Ring which will take place uh, in a couple weeks, and uh, that should be fun uh, as we do have King of the Ring coming up. Again, if you missed the very first episode, this is our schedule we have. King of the Ring is going to be our first event. It will happen uh, Sunday, week 4 of June, so several weeks away from King of the Ring. We've already got some people qualified, and uh, yes, that is going to be our plan as we move forward. We're going to try to get those better ratings, uh, but uh, I'm not uh, really worried about it here in this first couple episodes because... I know, we're trying to build up our storylines, and that is the goal. So that was Raw. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed it. Uh, a lot of great feedback thus far. I, it's someone who just really decided to start this on a whim. <laughs> I really appreciate all the great feedback. Uh, it's very encouraging thus far, and uh, hopefully you enjoy uh, what we have uh, in store here. As I said, my booking's a little bit more old-school approach, so um, it's, it's something that you have to build towards the big matches, and that's what I'm trying to do uh, with some of this. So uh, hang in there. It will, uh, it will all make sense with some of these storylines. Uh, once we get uh, to that point. So uh, be sure to subscribe, like, share, all that good stuff. And uh, that way you, you can catch all these episodes we do have uh, coming up here. And uh, on the next episode, it will be all about SmackDown as we will look at the very first edition of WWE SmackDown here in our WWE 2021 save. So uh, thanks as always uh, for watching. And next up, it will be WWE SmackDown. <laughs>